Okay, so it's happened. We've had our first young player poached. Of course, yet the boy has come in and kidnapped one of our younger players. And now we need to show them both on and off the field that we are better than them. Well, okay, so this is a new. Well, it's not a new. I've seen it before, but not on this save. If the boy comes in and poaches 15 year old striker Melke Jonsson, who, by the looks of the star rating, is a really decent player. So we will have to keep an eye on him and see if he turns up into the game and to see how good he is. And uh, if we can get him back from them, then I think I will try to get that. A bit odd that he wants to move to the boy and uh, it makes me both a bit angry and a bit sad but not too much I can do about that kind of stuff I want to show you this because I think it's really cool I actually lead European top league play development that is no shocker and that Barcelona is in second is no shocker either but if we just scroll down slightly here into the eighth place EF Bromo Poikana with loads of players look at this list of course there are players that actually play for us now but there's also loads of players who come from play for other teams so really cool we have developed 35 players from our academy which is cool there are some decent names just below us as well like fc Bayern and dynamo so i want to show you this really really cool uh, Brought a smile to my face after that awful poaching from uh, Yves Göteborg. Sadly, that isn't the only robbery we've had to endure. We actually lost the diamond in my tiara, the gem in our treasure chest, Marcus Hallgren. I knew that that minimum transfer clause was going to come back and bite me and it has Marcus Hallgren went to Dortmund for the measly fee of 2.4 million and I tried for months to get him to sign a new contract but it just wasn't possible because the big vultures were circling around him and I think he felt that and to be honest with you just look at him he is too good for us, <laughs> but that is probably the biggest reason for me wanting to keep him. It makes me a bit worried when I see that he's in the Borussia Dortmund under-19s. But I hope that he will shine. I hope that he will make us proud. Thank you for your service. Enjoy life in Germany. But as one man goes out, two others comes in. Uh, and both of them are experienced. Albin Iakdol, the lost son, returns. We sign him back from his stint in France. Uh, and we were supposed to get him in when his contract expired, but we paid around 100,000 to get him in. Now, instead, to use him for a little more than one and a half seasons. Uh, and I think that is probably what, what we can get out of him, considering that his physical abilities are declining. Natural fitness of 17 usually means that the decline isn't that steep, uh, but his numbers are still fairly low. Acceleration 8, agility 8, jumping reach stamina 10, pace strength 7. Mm. Good for him though, he is one exceptional deep line playmaker, and that is exactly where we will use him. Very exciting. Then we have the second experienced player who comes in, and that is Thomas Isherwood, who comes in from Uguodan. He has had uh, quite an odd career, I will show you in a second, but he is one solid central defender. Uh, very happy to get him in because defense was one area where we really struggled. So he left the academy in 2015 to move to. FC Bayern in the Bundesliga with high expectations on his shoulders. Never managed to break through there though, though played 18 games for uh, Bayern Munich 2 before he left for Bradford City in the League 1 where he played 3 games before he returned to Swedish football. He's played for Östersund and Jugodan, 
but no, we managed to get him back for the fairly low fee of 165,000. So some decent signings to get in and a gutting loss, but at least we've got a bit of money in. If we start looking at the new season, then we cannot sneak under the radar anymore. The pundits have picked up on us and they are predicting that Kleber Kleber Klebs will actually be the top goal scorer this season. Uh, and it doesn't stop that. No, they are also predicting Gustav Bullmann to be in with a chance of actually being the top player of the of the season. If we are looking at how everything ended last season, you remember we finished fifth when we were supposed to finish third and reach a place in Europe. Uh, instead, Eichor, Göteborg, Malmö and Hecken managed to finish ahead of us. But when we look at the preview for this season, we are predicted to finish just around the mid-table mark. Ninth place finish. I do hope we will finish higher. We have no players in the Media Dream 11. I think they will be pleasantly surprised. Uh, but mid-table finish, a little bit meh. Uh, today we will play Yevko Norshoping, but before we get into the actual game, let's look a bit at how our squad looks going into the season. So this is the actual squad we are going with this season and you might recognize a name or two, especially this lad in blue. He's back. He's back alone for the entire season and boy am I glad to have him back. If we look at the entire squad, it's a bit lopsided. We have loads of central midfielders but are lacking a bit when it comes to defenders. That is why new signing Thomas Isherwood is already unhappy. Because we didn't manage to sign any other central defenders. We had a couple of guys trying to get them in. But they turned us down. Because they believed that our financial strength wasn't good enough. And since we are restricted to basically signing back players. Who came through our youth academy. We didn't have too many options. This guy turned us down. He would have had been a decent signing. Jakob Uno Larsson. 29 year old uh, Hugh Gordon central defender and Miko Albornoz former Bromo Poikin Academy player nowadays he plays his football for the New York Red Bulls uh, we agreed in transfer deal with him but then he did, decided not to come so this is the actual squad that we are going with let's go through them from top to bottom Davor Blasevich experienced but he has now been forced to accept that he is simply a backup option to our number one Andrea Picornel who is turning into a good keeper and still has a bit of development left in him. When we come to the defensive line this is where things are getting <laughs> a bit worse. Omar Granberg the right defender isn't developing at all he's 20 years old which makes me th makes me think that he won't get any better. Mikkel Almebeck, he's basically in it for his determination. We are using him in one of our mentoring groups, but he doesn't have time on his side to, to put it gently. Uh, he will be in and around the first team squad for this season. Tim Bjergström at 33 is probably having his last decent season. His physicals are declining and that is troubling considering he is our best right back. William Kenner, central defender, 20 years old. It's a bit of the same as with Omar Giron, but he isn't getting that much better. But I think he is okay -ish as a backup option. Eric Figueroa isn't getting any younger either. This is a bit of a worry for us. We have older aging players in the back line. Uh, combined with younger players who really aren't any good so hopefully we can score a shitload of goals going forward uh, because I think we are going to let loads of them in. Axel Wallenboy is the best player in our back four together with unhappy Thomas Isherwood who is one solid central defender nice age on him as well 26 years old uh, if we can sort of rub that 
smirk of his face, make him happy again, then I think it will be important to us. Victor Carlson, he has a lot of promise, a lot of potential, but he isn't really yeah, developing the way we would like him to. My project of turning this right winger into a right wing back isn't going great. Needs to work on his tackling and his positioning. He's getting slightly better when it comes to the attacking attributes, but mm, he's only a backup option as well. Alvin Ekdal, what a great guy he is. 34 years old. He is our new captain. Leadership 16, teamwork 16. He will be our deep line playmaker this season. Vision 13, passing 15, tackling 13. I think it's the position where his lack of physical attributes will punish him the least as well. Gustav Sandberg Magnusson is still in it, mostly to train with us. He is way down the pecking order when it comes to central midfielders because this is where we are stacked. Jakob Eklund, we need to play him. Passing 13, technique 13, lovely stamina on him. Lucas Browning Lagerfeld, he can play. As a central midfielder, but we can also use him as a central defender. Maybe that is where he will play this season. Heading 10, passing 12, technique 12. That's actually decent. Maybe he will partner up Thomas Isherwood as a central defender. Hampus Findel, well rounded central midfielder, may be slightly more inclined to go forward than to win the ball, but a decent backup option as well. Same goes for Jakob Utmark, really. So nice depth in central midfield. Uh, and then we have Gustav Buman, who of course will play as well. Acceleration 17, passing 15, technique 14. He is one great player going forward. And then we have our attacking players, Marcus Hallgren. I don't think we need to go into too much detail with this guy because he is... Fantastic player. I'm sad that we lost him, but I'm glad that we got him back on loan this season. Uh, hopefully he will be very, very good for us. Maybe he could even lead us into some uh, sort of European qualification. We will see. Levis Kiflesus still struggling with his finishing, but jumping reach of 20 and a decent heading, 195 centimeters tall. Hopefully we can see him head in a ball or two this season. John Tete. Struggling even more <laughs> with his finishing. Hopefully he can give the ball to the last player in this squad. And that is Christopher Krebs. Krebs, 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 Krebs. Scoring goals for fun. Scoring goals when he isn't supposed to do them. He doesn't look that awesome when you just look at him like this on paper. But then you start to look at where he really shines. Finishing 15, heading 16, technique 12, off the ball 15, nice acceleration and agility, nice anticipation, composure decisions. He is one great player. Then he is very weak when it comes to everything else, but when it comes to scoring goals, he is amazing. So this gives us this starting 11 for the first game. No real surprises here. I decided to use... Browning Lagerfeld next to Isherwood in that central defense pairing. Let's see how we do against Yves Conor Shopping. We're off, we're off. The new season is here. We are at home and at least it looks like a half capacity crowd maybe. And that is something we have gotten used to now. We had over 4,000 average attendance last season, which is kind of good. I think maybe in a season or two or three we can ask the board for an extension of the stadium, an extension of the capacity. <laughs> they would probably say no because they've said no to everything else that I've asked for so far. But at least we can start asking for it. Remember when we had like a hundred people watching? It's only been four seasons. And now we are predicted to finish. Finish top half, but I am predicting us to finish even higher. We are aiming for one of the European spots. I don't think we'll win the league this season. Arco and Malmö might be slightly too strong, but I think we are in it to win one of the European spots. And Tete, he shows that we mean business. Five minutes in, we are one in up. Lovely assist from Marcus Hagen. I thought it was offside there for a second, but Tete makes it 1-0. Hagen gets it, it, drops down nicely, gets the ball, 
finds Tate. Tate makes no mistake. Fires it in despite his low finishing. Fantastic start to the season. Let's keep this up now, lads. We see another highlight, another replay. And I'm not sure if we are letting Yves Gunnar shopping over on our side of the pitch so far. Obviously we are. <laughs> Just as I was saying that maybe we weren't. They score 2-1. Okay, I was getting 1-1, one, one, I mean. I got a bit too cocky there. <laughs> and they've equalised. Oh, I'm the master jinxer. They are back in this with their first shot of the game after 17 and a half minutes. Nice header from knowledge, and maybe I should just stop speaking altogether. I'm only kidding, I'm not. Here we come, Valamori. Save from their keeper, Posovic. And it's not like the chances are flying around. Three shots, four shots from us. All on target, two shots from them, all on target, and two goals so far. And pretty much no no highlights except for that. But here we come, Valenboy with it, find someone centrally. There we go, and switch flanks. Switch flanks. There we go, and get the ball back in again. There we go, oh, that is one lovely attack, but... Ooh. Tete misses it. Maybe we should have played Kvlesas there and he would have scored instead with that jumping reach of 20. So, one final highlight before the half time and they miss it. Thank you. So, we go into half time where the score of 1 1. I'm not happy. I'm going to tell the players that I'm not happy. They understand that. They understand that we have raised the bar. Season by season, we've raised the bar. And this season, it's time to show that we belong at least in the top half. Hopefully, contenders for European spots. And I think that's pretty much what Ipkono and Shopping have in mind as well. They want to be a top half contender for European spots as well. Jörgström to Halgen. Jörgström gets the ball in. Oh, Tete hits the bar. Oh, we wouldn't. Oh, and Krabby misses the goal. Pretty much two sitters missed that. I'm not sure we will have any better chances for the rest of this game. Bullman to Valenboy. Tete. Oh, another save from their keeper. Now we are piling on the pressure. And we're giving these guys a couple of more minutes. And then I think it's time to substitute slightly injured midfielder Bullman off. And maybe bring in. Levis Kefleses to see if he can head the ball in. At least he can jump. Maybe he should have been a volleyball player. Here they come. If we can't win it, we can Isherwood. Disgruntled Isherwood. Piconel with it. Playing one twos between the central defender and the keeper isn't what i love i mean i like us being passing oriented but i really don't like us to do it in our own box krebi Bouman, switch it out there we go and get the ball back in valenboy beats his man <laughs> oh valenboy fools everyone everyone thinks he is going to square it and he fires it in near the first post wow I think the keeper isn't going to be happy about that. He was so short we were going to have a cross or a square it and he just fools him completely. So 2-1 and we have taken control over the second half. And as I say that, they are probably going to equalize. We have the ball still though. Albin Ekdal. The Messiah returning. Gets the ball out to Björkström. To Krabi. Krabi, 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 Krabi. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, 3 1 up. Mr. Bowman slightly injured. What's wrong with him? Potential lower leg injury. That could be basically anything. So, Halpus Findel comes in, and we are giving Kevlezus half an hour. Get Tete off. 
he was injured as well. Okay. I'm not going to say anything along the lines of we cannot lose this or this feels rock solid or anything like that because that is going to come and bite me in the ass. So uh, let's just sit here in silence and enjoy our lead as long as it lasts. Oh, that's all the silence I could take. Browning with it, you're all alone. No one, no one twos with the keeper, please. Get the ball to Iakdal. Such, uh, such a good player with the ball at his feet. Yeah. Is this going to be their highlight finally? Maybe not the best football ever produced. For Santos Sosa. Runs around with it. Bonk innocent. And a lovely save from Piconel. Let's not get them back into the game, shall we? Browning gets it away. Krebi, can we counter on them? Marcus Halgen has. Does he have anyone with him? One, two, three. Yeah, but they get the ball out of the pitch. It's a little bonky. 15 minutes left. Axel Wallenboy is looking tired. Let's make one final sub and get young Victor Carlson in. Do a couple of switcheroosies. So there we go. He's going to play. Right defender for a couple of minutes. See if the uh, the game time can can make him improve even more. Pick on L to Isherwood. Can we score one more goal? Long ball to Krebi. Oh, lovely save from their keeper. I really wanted to sing the Krebi Krebi song again. I mean, I could do it when he doesn't score, but it isn't the same then. Eak Dahl, nice ball to Eak Lund. I do love when we have players with very similar names. It makes it much easier for me. Jokestrom, Eak Dahl, Carlson, the youngling, youngster. I don't know why I sound so excited about that, because here they come. They lift the ball in. And we may counter on them. Hallgren. Hallgren to Keflesu. So, <laughs> what a cheeky little chip there. Absolutely brilliant. I think the keeper thought that he was going to head that one in. But instead, he chipped it. Their keeper isn't having the best game of his life, is he? 4 1. And if this is an indication of. How the rest of the season will go, then I'm really, really pleased so far. Of course I am. I think Noise Shopping are with a similar stature as us, with a similar similar expectation for this season. So a 4-1 win in the first first game week is always important, always nice. Browning with it finds Findel. Findel shoots again. I don't know if he's trying to shoot to kill or actually score. Issue would just kicks it away. Let's end this game. And shall we end it with one more goal? Krebi. Krebi beats his man. Who's in there? Is it Keflezos? Keflezos hits the bar. A 4 1 win. Two headers in the bar. A good game. All over a good game from the from the guys. One final chance, maybe. At least for them. They come four versus two. Can they get a consolation goal? Yes, they can. Bonky innocent. He's all alone with the keeper. Not even Piconel can save that one. But I'm going to call it now. They cannot come back in this game. And they don't. We have the final chance. Findel sends it in to Halgren who misses. And he's also offside. At any second now, the ref's going to blow the whistle. At any second. Ref. There. So a 4 2 win. The front trio, they were great. Iakdal wasn't as good as I wanted him to be, but maybe he will need a couple of games to adjust to the way we play. 
uh, the Browning Lagerfeld uh, Isherwood combination at central defence work well. So we are third in the table. I call the reigning champions absolutely crushed Jen Shepping Sodra away, but Malmö, who are pretty good to finish way up there, only managed a draw. We have got the boy won 3 0. So we are third in the table after one game. Not that that means anything. If we look at the games going forward, we are playing Sundsvall. Fairly easy game. Then Malmö, a tough one. Then Mjelby, a bit easier. And then three tough games against New World and Oiko and Hecken. And so on and so forth. I will be back around the 10 game mark. And then we will know what this season is starting to shape into. I hope that we are up there. I'm hoping for a top 5 position when I come back after 10 games. I'm so excited about this season. I hope that you are as well. Thank you for watching. Uh, I'll see you next time. Until then, bye.